Before the season, I predicted that the Atlanta Falcons would not win the NFC South. And, you know, when looking at things, I kind of thought that I didn't like some of their offseason moves. I didn't like the fact they let Abraham go and they brought in O.C. Munor instead. They paid a bunch of money to Stephen Jackson. I'm like, I don't know about all of this. You know, this was a Falcons team that a lot of people believed heading into this season, and understandably so, and rightfully so. It wasn't that far away from being a Super Bowl team. Most people, though, wrongly assume that they had to strictly address the defensive side of the football. And I said no, and I had been saying for a period of time leading into the 2013 NFL draft that the Falcons could sit there and address the defensive side of the football all they want, but ultimately that team is built around Matt Ryan. And you have to put Matt Ryan in the best possible situations to succeed. So for all of you that sat there and tried to shit on me or knock on me when I said that the Atlanta Falcons should probably draft Eddie Lacy in the first round, what do you got to say about it now? Eddie Lacy's playing in the playoffs. Matt Ryan and the Falcons are not up yours. But it was a really bad year for the Atlanta Falcons. And every once in a while, maybe you're just going to have one of these years where things don't go your way. You get some bad breaks. You get a lot of injuries. And that's what happened with the Atlanta Falcons in 2013. To go from getting a first-round bye last year, winning a playoff game, to now going 4-12, and losing seven games by seven points or less. This was a rough year for the Falcons on so many different fronts. They battled injuries on both sides of the football throughout the course of the entire year, especially on the offensive side of the football. Roddy White spent the first probably three-quarters of the season not being right, and then by the time he finally did get healthy and get right, it was far too late. You had Julio Jones, who was on the verge of a Big time, big time season where he maybe was going to lead the league in receiving yards and maybe touchdowns. He was going to establish himself as a top three NFL wide receiver, maybe even put himself in the conversation of being the best wide receiver in the NFL. And then he gets a stress fracture in his foot and he misses the rest of the year. Steven Jackson early on in the season got an injury that took him out of action for several weeks. And it took him quite a while to get back into the rhythm. And even once he did get back into the rhythm, you can see he was a running back over 30 that had lost a step and his best days were clearly behind him. And what all these injuries led to and the inability of the Falcons to run the ball led to was that their offense ended up becoming too one-dimensional. And as a result, in part because they became one-dimensional, I feel like they became too predictable and they struggled to protect Matt Ryan consistently. Now, that could be, again, because of injuries on the offensive line or their offensive line just not being that good. And then also the predictability of the play calling that a lot of times they would get down by a lot, so they became one-dimensional. They couldn't run the ball, so they became even one, more one-dimensional. And when opposing defenses in the NFL can start to predict what you're going to do and start to tee off on you and blitz and bring the house – you're going to struggle. And they did struggle to protect Matt Ryan. And Matt Ryan was down a lot in a lot of games this year, which led to him forcing the issue, which led to him committing a lot of turnovers. It just overall wasn't a good year for the Atlanta Falcons. Defense was bad, and the offense was not nearly as good as you might expect. You know, injuries or not, you still maybe would have expected a little bit more. It wasn't all doom and gloom for the Atlanta Falcons. You had Harry Douglas emerged finally as a capable slot wide receiver, and he ended up finishing, believe it or not, with over a 1,000 receiving yards. This is something that bodes well for 2014, with a whole offseason to get healthy for a Julio Jones and a Roddy White, and now you throw a Harry Douglas in the mix? How much better could this Atlanta Falcons offense be in 2014 and beyond for what actually happened in 2013? It allowed the guys like the Harry Douglases and the Drew Smiths or excuse me, not the Drew Smiths, the Drew Davises to step up and produce. Now you've got even more depth at that wide receiver position, legit depth at that wide receiver position than you would have had maybe before the season started. Now, the sad thing about this ultimately was that this looks like it was Tony Gonzalez's swan song in the NFL, his last season in the NFL. It has been a privilege and an honor to be able to watch Tony Gonzalez all of these years. Funny story about Tony Gonzalez, when I watched him play at Cal, both on the football and basketball course, I remember sitting there heading into that 97 draft, and I'm really like, man, I wish the Bears would draft this guy. I want the Bears to draft this guy. This guy could be a big-time player. This guy's got Hall of Famer written all over him. He's a freakish athlete. He's got that rebounding ability in basketball that I feel will translate very well to playing tight end in the NFL. He could be a real game changer, a league changer, an offense changer. And he was all of those things and so many more. 
a consistently reliable weapon that was a part of a lot of good Kansas City Chiefs offenses over the years and was a part of several good Atlanta Falcons offenses over the years, brought another dimension and element to the table in his last few years in Atlanta. He did. He helped expand that Falcons offense and made them that much more potent and even uh, better. The league is going to miss this guy and his consistency and his production and his kind of clean-cut image and the professionalism with which he conduct him, conducted himself and the way he conducted himself on and off the field, the leadership that he brought on and off the field. A great representative for the league, to me, it can't even really be argued anymore. The greatest tight end in the history of the National Football League. Every tight end that comes after will always be compared to Tony Gonzalez. And every tight end will be held up to Tony Gonzalez's standard. He will be the standard. He will be the measuring stick for great tight ends. And when people are evaluating college tight ends and trying to figure out how they will equate to the NFL, they will use Tony Gonzalez. No question about it. You know, I still remember, like I said, the Bears in 97, you know, they ended up because they were idiots trading a first round pick for Rick Meyer. That first round pick, of course, could have equated to Tony Gonzalez. It did not because good organizations take players like Tony Gonzalez and bad organizations trade first round picks for another team's former failed first round pick at quarterback and Rick Meyer who couldn't throw to his lap. It's that simple. <laughs> So looking at the Falcons heading into 2014, you would have to assume that Umanyora won't be back. You would maybe assume as well that Steven Jackson won't be back. And I understand and realize that a lot of the emphasis and focus for the Atlanta Falcons in improving in this offseason is going to be Mike Smith, Mike Nolan, and that defense. And wanting to get an infusion of young talent in the front seven of that Atlanta Falcons defense. And I get that and I understand that. And that is definitely a need area that is an area that organization desperately needs a lot of improvement on. They need a premier edge rusher. They do. They need somebody up the middle that can be a three down tackle that can affect both, both aspects of the opposing team's offenses, both the running game and the passing game. They need better play out of the linebacker position. No question. All of these things hold true. However, I do want to throw this little monkey wrench in there. The Atlanta Falcons have the sixth pick in this upcoming draft and no, I'm not advocating that they take a quarterback in the first round because no, none of the quarterbacks in this draft I don't believe would be an upgrade over Matt Ryan. However, Matt Ryan has played six years in the NFL now. He's going to be, what, 29 next year? He's not getting any younger. And you got to do everything you can to maximize what you've got in Matt Ryan for the time, whatever it is, that you still have Matt Ryan left as a big-time franchise NFL quarterback. And in order to do that, you have to protect your quarterback. The Atlanta Falcons, to me, have a severe deficiency on that offensive line. I've never been a huge Sam Baker fan, and this season was yet another reason why I proved to not be a Sam Baker fan. They couldn't protect Matt Ryan. They struggled to open holes consistently in the running game. That offensive line needs a lot of help. It needs a lot of work. They need to find a consistent every down running back that they can trust, that is young, that could be there for a number of years for Matt Ryan. They need to find a tight end to replace Tony Gonzalez because I don't think Tolo is that guy just yet. You need somebody else that can line up all over the place and create mismatches for opposing defenses, linebackers, and secondaries. So a lot of the emphasis and focus will most likely be on the defensive side of the football for the Atlanta Falcons in this offseason and heading into the 2014 NFL Draft. However, I feel if this organization takes that approach and that philosophy, Dimitrov and Smith and Mike Nolan and everybody involved with the Falcons, um, Arthur Blank, feel like they will be mistaken. They must improve on the offensive side of the football as well. And if anything else, by default, your franchise player is on the offensive side of the football. That's the player that you would protect above all else. That's the player that you have to build around the most. That's the player that you have to put in the best possible scenarios and situations to succeed. And the best way you do that is by giving them better protection up front. A tight end that can help replace Tony Gonzalez. Now you've got a Julio Jones or Roddy White coming back healthy. A Harry Douglas that has established himself as a very competent, capable slot receiver in the NFL. You bring in a young running back that could be that bell cow, similar to like an Eddie Lacy was or a Le'Veon Bell was in Pittsburgh. Those guys are available all throughout the draft, no question about it. 
If anything, if I'm drafting for the Atlanta Falcons here in 2014, I'm focusing, in fact, on the offensive side of the football. I realize that will be a very popular on a a very unpopular opinion, excuse me, and a lot of people will say, you don't know what you're talking about, Jeff. You're wrong. Da, 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 da. Well, I also tried to tell a lot of you before last year's draft that they should just be taking a running back in Eddie Lacy in the first round, and you told me I was wrong then, and look at how things played out for Eddie Lacy, and look how things played out for the Atlanta Falcons. I talked about it last year. They had to focus on the offensive side of the football more than people realize. Maybe now Dimitrioff and Blank and that organization – have taken off the blinders a little bit, and they say, wow, you know what? We need to get Matt Ryan some help. He's the guy. He's not going to be around forever. I'm not saying he's got one or two years left, but, you know, he doesn't have 15 or 20 years left in his career. He maybe has three, four, five peak years of his career left at, as in terms of a big-time peak-level quarterback. Anything after 34 or 35 is all a guessing game. you got to help Matt Ryan now, and the easiest way to do that is to get the Atlanta Falcons back to being more of an offensive juggernaut, which was the formula, frankly, that helped them get into the playoffs and win a couple of divisional titles. That's what they have to do. If they just solely focus on defense, then you know what? They're going to miss the playoffs again in 2014, and you can book it.